Prince with both Bud Denker and Michael Montry. If you'd like to join us here at the press conference area, we'll get started here in just a second. WDIV. Who was it? The guy from like 6 a.m. this morning. Oh. <laughs> APR guy. All right, guys, we'll go ahead and get started here. Uh, we're joined uh, right now by Chairman of the Chevrolet Detroit Grand Prix, presented by Lear, Bud Denker, uh, along with Presidents of the Chevrolet Detroit Grand Prix, presented by Lear, Michael Montry, the two men who are in charge of this race. And Guys, I guess the first question we'll pose to you, Bud, uh, always kind of coming down off the glow of the weekend. It's been uh, an eventful weekend, an exciting weekend, to say the least, here back on Belle Isle. First time since 2019, obviously, with uh, the pandemic forcing the cancellation of last year's event. I guess your emotions, your thoughts immediately as you, you see the fans kind of head for the exits and we cap it off with a very exciting second duel in Detroit. What are your thoughts overall for the weekend? Well, I go back a little bit in, in, uh, in the last few six months and see the journey that we've gone where we are now. It's been amazing. Um, you know, we were in the month of January, February, we had no fans. Would we, would we have a race? That was the question we asked ourselves. Um, our partners, General Motors and Lear, said, we're there for you. If you have no fans, we're still going to have a race. Um, that, that was the attitude. And then it was uh, at the 10 percent fans, right, Michael? 10 percent fans in the month of April and May. And then we had just a couple weeks ago the ability to open it up to everybody. Unfortunately, the infrastructure takes time to order, so we couldn't get a lot of people, more people here than we wanted. Um, but now come to this weekend, look how it un unfurled. It just shows you that with a great product, um, you can deliver some excellent entertainment. Where we had that this weekend, whether it be the Indy Lights or sports cars or IndyCar series, two races in a row, IndyCar series. Look at today. I mean, the battle between Joseph and Col Colton and, and Pato, just young stars of this sport, clean racing, tough racing, nothing dirty about it at all. Um, shows you the caliber out there that's playing. And this racetrack, Watch those in-car cameras, the hands of those guys moving around in there, sawing that wheel off. It's tough. It's really tough. I was talking to Scott McLaughlin afterwards. He goes, the simulator gives you no justification for what this track can do to you. <laughs> so it's the toughest he's ever driven. So great weekend overall. Michael, get your thoughts on, on how everything panned out for the weekend. I know you were out there talking with fans and heard some of the comments. And, and, and just being able to welcome people back being one of the first big events here in Detroit in the state of Michigan where we you know, have relaxed restrictions, where we feel safe and comfortable hosting a, a safe amount of people in a venue like this outdoors. Yeah, I mean, you know, we were over in Indy last week or two weeks ago, whenever it was, and uh, there was an excitement in the air, and, and my whole hope was that that excitement would carry over for here, and, and it, it certainly did. Uh, people were excited to be here. They were excited to get out and experience an event, be outside. The weather cooperated beautifully, um, and, uh, and everyone was just in a good mood. Uh, it just really was, was great to see everybody out and excited. And I'll tell you, I, you know, Bud mentioned our, our two main sponsors, Lear and Chevrolet, uh, but every one of our partners, you know, this is a community event. We're a 501c3, and every one of our partners from the local community stepped up. And if their corporate policy, when we had to have them sign to a hospitality agreement, for instance, uh, wouldn't allow them to host people or employees in a, in, a, in a networking or corporate environment. They switched their commitment to signage or something else. They were all on board to help us out and uh, couldn't thank them and, and all the fans that showed up more uh, for giving us what was uh, certainly one of the most memorable <laughs> weekends we've had, if, if for nothing else, than the lead up. <laughs> 
What uh, you mentioned, corporate partners, good point. How many partners did we end up shaking out with this year? Uh, we, we we didn't we didn't lose one from our 2019 event. We always have you know right around 70. We were over 70 this year, 72. Uh, and like I said, every one of them stuck around. If they couldn't have corporate uh, hospitality, they did signage, or some of them gave us product. Staples gave us product, hand sanitizers that you saw all around the venue, and just everybody's incredible and willing to help. So. Yeah, right. I think I approached every one of them as I walked across the chalets today and looked them in the face and said, are you back in 2022? And the moment is right. The moment is hot. And I never had somebody say no to us. So, um, you know, Bernie, Bernie knows his marketplace. He knows what kind of unique in environment it is, right? And people that step up when you ask them to step up. And we saw it again today with 70 people helping us out here. So, I mean, I've never received so many thank yous before. Well, they haven't because of just fans and people around just thanking us. And, uh, um, it's also good to see people's faces because you can actually see they're smiling right now versus their eyes only. So how ironic is it also that here we are in one of the most restrictive states in the last three or four months, and we're the first place that IMSA comes to and IndyCar comes to with no mask. So pretty cool. I think one of the other things that was a big benefit for the weekend, which we rarely ever get, and I heard you talk about this, is great weather, right? It seems like at, at some point during the Detroit Grand Prix weekend, you're going to have some rain, and it really held off. It really was smiling on us for the whole weekend, wasn't it? I, well, I think we all deserved that, didn't we? We all deserved a, a massive, an amazing weekend after all the hell we've been through for the last 16 months. And uh, we caught it. We caught it this weekend. We really did. We looked at we looked, looked, looked the forecast what two weeks in advance, and every single day get closer. We look at it and cross our fingers. And, oh, yeah. and um, but I would also say, you know, I also want to mention too. On Thursday evening, we had an event down at Campus Martius with the mayor and all the you know, top people from our corporations, and we. Uh, I think we raised between six and seven hundred thousand net net. All that money goes back into the Belo Conservancy. Belo Conservancy. Um, so the, the Scott Fountain is running again. How about that? How about our winner's circle? Looks like you're someplace in Europe, isn't it? You would never know you're in Detroit or Belo when you see that, that winner's circle. Other than Le Mans, maybe in Indianapolis Motor Speedway, one of the most beautiful winner's circles in the world. So, and by the way, Scott Fountain is running because the Grand Prix is here. The Grand Prix's not here. Scott Fountain's not running, but what a shame that would be for the next four or five months for our, our, our citizens of our, our community. Yeah, another benefit for the race. But we were talking a little bit, I know we certainly don't have any final attendance numbers, but you got an estimate, uh, something that we can share with the media based on the constraints that we had with what was available for fans. You talk a little bit about what we're looking at for attendance for the weekend, and at least preliminary numbers. You, you know the numbers better than I do, as far as the number of grandstands we had and general admission, and then plus the paddock or the uh, suites. What do you yeah, think? yeah, and, and and again, you know, based on kind of the parameters that we went through setting this up and the stages of opening that we went through setting this up, we limited what we allowed in, and we capped general admission tickets at 2,500 each day, for instance. Um, and then our grandstands to two, we usually have at least four, sometimes five grandstands that we build. This year we built two. Um, and um, so the, the two grandstands hold, you know, call it just under five, just under 5,500 and then 2,500 uh, GA. And then, um, and then we put about 2,000 in those suites per day. So, so roughly about one third the attendance what we would normally have. Yeah. Comfortable numbers for the weekend to announce you were nine ten thousand a day. Nine. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Yeah. close to thirty thousand for the weekend, something like that. Yeah. When yep. you factor in. Yeah. Good good number. Factor in free pre day uh, on Friday, which obviously was a huge success. To guys, yeah. uh, for those who weren't aware, Comerica Bank free pre day, no tickets available, virtually you know at capacity for free pre day, and very close to capacity each of the other two days. Right. Yeah. Did we reach capacity on Saturday? Uh, we were maybe 500 short on Saturday, yeah, maybe so 500. But close. but you got to remember when we started planning this thing, that was when the outdoor event cap was a thousand visitors. So we, we we literally started planning this thing where we thought we might have only a thousand people. So and it's, and it's to started, get where we were, I mean, and it started with Chris Illich. It started with the folks over yeah. at Meyer because they have a golf tournament next weekend. It started with the folks at Dow, um, uh, the folks at Rocket Mortgage, yep. Jason Langwell, and. Uh, Jay Farner's team comparing notes, same playbooks, same handbooks. We're not doing things differently, and lo and behold, now it's we're all wide open. So yeah. uh, Meyer, tur Meyer tournament next weekend is in uh, Grand Rapids for LPGA, and we got the Fourth of July event coming up. Of course, Rocket Mortgage Classic uh, out at Detroit uh, Country Club. So we're all back. It's good to be back, and it's good to be normal. Yeah, something to be proud of. Certainly, that uh, the Grand Prix played a big role, I think, in getting us to the next step in the in the whole process of here and getting back to normal. Uh, we can take a few questions. If you have a question, please feel free. Bernie, you can just line up there and ask at the mic. 
uh, right behind Mr. Tim May, who's first up. Thank you very much, uh, Merrill. I was just uh, maybe ask both of y'all. I know, you know, the ties to Team Penske and stuff. But uh, when <laughs> when Federal Award made his big push there at the end, and uh, I was I was wondering, were y'all more thrilled about what you were seeing on the track or the roar you heard <laughs> from the stands, uh, from the fans and stuff? Because that was a big indicator <laughs> that this race was back, right? It was. And remember, you know, being a, being an owner of the IndyCar series now. All I wanted is a safe and competitive race. I have no favorites, so I'll just say that. Um, the, the, the fans, how about the fans roaring every time they, they touch wheels in turn seven, coming into turn seven, touching wheels. When, when, when Pato got close on Joseph, he heard a roar of the fans also. That was so cool. So I was in the Chevrolet suite uh, for the last 20 laps, uh, crossing my fingers that the Chevrolet Detroit Grand Prix presented by Lear was a Chevrolet, um, even though I... Once again, they're in competitive race, <laughs> um, uh, and uh, they were just ecstatic. So, for me, it was competitive racing, and also the fans that saw it on TV here domestically and international. Michael's in charge of all the international broadcasting. Um, they saw an amazing product today, content and entertainment. And one of the things, uh, what did what did you guys learn from the Rosenquist shunt yesterday, from a wall standpoint? Number one, logistically. Obviously, you had tires all ready to go, bundles and all that kind of stuff. But uh, is there any rethought about that corner or about the? I know you you guys probably review that every year after a race and stuff. But uh, did you see a problem there as you look back on it? Yeah, but we kind of did a CSI this morning, uh, myself and the AMR AMR team. By the way, the AMR safety team best in the business, and look what they do. They go to every single race. The same people. They're consistent. They know how to take people out of a car. It was the first time they had to extract somebody from a car with the aero screen, first time, at a 40 degree pitch, a guy who had a bad back. So you know, it's hard to get out there by itself. So to your point though, everything did its job. Um, we set up the corner, so the apex, we are always in the apex to where the, the hit, would, hit would, would occur. We had about 15 to 20 feet of extra uh, uh, barrier wall. Um, the driver went through nine rows of tires before he got to the wall. So the tires use their energy, the wall moved to use the energy, the fence moved to use the energy, and the attenuator on the car, the front of the car, used the energy. So we had an amazing hit at a wide open speed, I don't know what it was, and uh, we have a driver who left the hospital today. That's what it means for us. So everything did its job. Mia? Yeah. Given everything you guys went through planning this year's Grand Prix, what are your hopes and expectations for next year? I mean, it just somebody just said it to me in the other room. It's great momentum. I mean, uh, everyone in every one of our corporate hospitality customers were thrilled to be here. They had packed suites, um, you know, sold out capacity uh, in each of their suites. Uh, so great momentum there. And as far as the the ticket customers go. Um, great momentum there as well. I mean, it's it's good when you're close to a sellout, right? And then Friday was sold out. So I, I think, you know, you always look at an event, and this is an interesting event because it's a temporary circuit, right? Uh, it's, not, it's not sitting somewhere that you can go observe it and look at it and analyze things every day. You have, you have about five days each year when it's built that you can really kind of walk around and say, okay, next year I want to change this, change that, and a whole lot of pictures, right? Um, and that's what we do every year. We take a look at What's built? What can we improve? Uh, that's one of the advantages of a temporary circuit. You can improve it and change it each year to suit what may or may not happen. Um, so for us next year, it's a question of, you know, uh, what do you do with that area in front of the fountain? Uh, what do you do with that area that was general admission this year around the horseshoe? Uh, all kinds of things that, that are going through my mind and going through the team's mind on how we can improve this event for next year. Certainly want to get back, you know, much more of the Meyer fan zone that we when we were planning, we, we weren't allowed to have. In the end, we were, but it was too late to pivot. Um, so certainly want to have more off-track fan um, attractions. Um, but uh, for what, what we were able to do and where we ended up, I, I'm thrilled. And again, we'll start our planning for next year on Tuesday. We have our post-event meeting with everybody on the team on Tuesday, and we go through what worked for this year and what we want to improve, improve on next year. And then we set our, set our course and go. Roger, follow has, up, Roger's given us some ideas as well, so we'll follow some <laughs> There's always some good well. ideas. Yes, yeah. yes, he does. Yeah. Mia, did you have any follow-up? Uh, yes, I have one. So uh, you guys have 
one year left on the contract. Do you guys plan on keeping the Grand Prix on Belle Isle in the future? I'll take that. That's our hope. You know, as, as owners of the racing series now, as, uh, as what you saw today um, and what, you what we know we bring to Belle Isle, um, you know, Belle Isle needs both private partnerships and need public partnerships, and we're a great example of how that works. To raise $700,000 plus for Belle Isle charity, um, to give back $13.5 million of investment to Belle Isle over the last, you know, next number of years, to have the Scott Fountain running so beautifully, to have these grounds, uh, how beautiful are these grounds now? We, pol we polished the casino for people to use for weddings and receptions and whatnot here as well, too. It's ready to go. We're going to leave, and it's ready to go for them to come in and move in here in a, few, a couple weeks. So uh, our intention is to continue on. We have a great partner in the DNR who maintains the island. Um, they're our partner, and uh, we hope to continue that, and we'll have negotiations with them here in the next few months to understand what that process is. Michael? Uh, yes, to the Bud Denker Construction Company. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the character of the track all the drivers were talking about how tough, how fun it was, but, uh, you know, uh, it's rough and bumpy, according to the drivers. Uh, any plans to do any repaving, or would you prefer it to be that sort of demanding uh, circuit that uh, is getting a real reputation? I like the latter. You know, we, we, this is not an oval, right? This is not something you put your one hand on the wheel and you go around the track and... Um, I think it brings the cream of the crop rises to the top when you see that with this series. And you see it also in a duel. It's, it's hard enough to do this race one race. We do it twice. Only one on the circuit typically that we do twice is here in Belle Isle, the hardest racing circuit that Scott McLaughlin said he's ever been on in his life. Jimmy Johnson got a real wake-up, too. As he told me as well. He said, this was tough. Um, no power steering, as you recall, and it's a tough place to be. But no. I, we, don't plan we don't plan to have uh, much improvements at all, Mike. We, we're patching along the way. It's been two years since we've been here, so the track needed a lot of patching. In fact, we were out patching it this morning between turns two and turns three uh, before the race. So I like the way it is. I think it grows, builds great character. The other thing that Tim Sendrick mentioned this track does is some tracks don't allow, don't allow the red tires to differentiate themselves much between the blacks and the, and the, and the reds. This track allows the red tires to denigrate to a point that they really fall off after a few laps, which is what they're designed to do. And so you have a real strategy now, red tires, black tires, some tracks don't allow that. This track allows that. I hadn't thought about that. Bruce? A long time ago, pre-COVID, this race was going to be part of the moved North American auto racing or North American auto show. Right. What is the plans of that? Is that still going to be moved to June like it was originally intended before COVID hit? And what do you see as being able to have this race feed into that event? It's a good question. Um, you know, they, got, they have an event called, is it Motobella, Bernie's Motor called Bella. this year, Motobella, yeah. right? Yep. Um, it's in September, August, September, taking its place. So um, that's happening this year. Bruce, I don't know, to answer your question, if they, if they pivoted back to looking at something in 2022 to June. Michael, any idea of what I, year? I, I do not know. that. Well, they moved it to October, so I think if they come back, they, the new date is October. Okay. But whether they come back to the city, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I don't, I don't know, Bruce. Bernie, did you have a question? You know, one thing I would I would have done differently, Michael and I talked about it, was we cut we cut off um we cut off free pre day at eight thousand people or so, right? I mean they they required them to bring a ticket. Yeah. We made that was a mistake. We should have brought let anybody who wanted to come come and not require a ticket. Um, so we had we had no shows and as a result of having a no show it prevented somebody else who wanted to be here couldn't be here. So we made a mistake on that one. So that's that's the one I saw from a fan perspective that we we didn't do well on. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, no, totally, definitely, definitely agree yeah. with that. So, but the product on the on the racetrack, Bernie, and it, this this city is all about big events. They love big events. We're we're very good at putting on big events. Um, we did a real good job, and, and I think hope I hopefully you were treated to some great service by our folks here. They took care of you again, like I hope they always do. Our our volunteers always have the smiles on their faces, and what can we do for you? Which is what I love about them. Um, 550 this year volunteers. Yep. Yep. Normally a thousand. 
Um, so I hope that they, were, they treated you well and treated our customers well. Uh, David, David. Yeah. I wanted to ask, do you, uh, what, what did you feel was missing this year that you would have included? Like, would there have been like uh, four big screens uh, around? Because like I used to, Over like here, where yeah. the arrow yeah. hospitality is, it used to be a big screen there. Yeah, and, I, I and one, one, one back here also, right. yeah, uh, the sure. back straightaway as well. Sure. Yeah, for, for right. people that were there too. Yeah. So, I mean, would you plan to bring that back? There just literally wasn't enough. Yeah, and, and more entertainment. You know, it, it, this, this needs to be a, an event, not just a race, yeah. right? And uh, which means the kids need to have things to do, the Meyer right. fan zone, right? The concerts we had before, right? It needs to be an event. And I would say this time it was more of a race um, and getting together again, which worked. Yeah. Right, people were happy to hug and, yeah, you know, and kiss each other and shake hands and things we haven't done for 15 months. So I think that worked itself very well and covered up some of those things we probably weren't able to do this time. Right. But we need to get now to make it an event, not just a race. And can you remind us how much um, Mr. Penske's invested into, or the whole group has invested into this race? Uh, over time. I've got a figure in my head that says something like 36 million or something. Yeah. But I Thir can't remember. 13.5 million capital investments, right? right? Capital investments and then another, what do we now raise for the conservancy? Uh, it'll be just under 6 million in the last six years. So about 6 million we've given to the Belle Isle Conservancy and um, over the last six years. All that money goes to Belle Isle. What that, that money goes to, David, just so you know, is they invested 400000 a few years ago to make an ADA ramp onto the Scott Fountain to put people use the ramp, right. uh, all marble. Um, it also goes to allowing our aquarium, one of the country's lar oldest aquariums, to be open free of charge year-round. We cover the costs of that as well, too. And then other things, that infrastructure things they do here on Belle Isle, too. So Belle Isle needs a lot of help still. It needs a lot of work. Um, it's better than it was when we came here in 2007, I can tell you that. Um, but it still needs a lot of work, and our all that money goes back to Belle Isle. Right, and then completely different topic. Um, the double, uh, you know, you were talking about it's kind of like USP as being the bump and being very different from a lot of other places. Um, is it always your intention to have it as a double header because uh, you know just make it special, stand out from the other uh, event season? Um, yes, and as a series owner now, yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, sorry. One more. No. Oh, yeah. Uh, the gap between the uh, Indy and Detroit. Are you going to close it back up, or is it going to vary according to what the hell Le Mans do? Yeah. About that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you said, Ugh, and I think I'll echo that. Uh, TBD as well. Uh, I think, you know, there's... TV contract. Yeah, there's a TV contract. There's, uh, you know, if you ask anybody in the IndyCar series, they like the gap. Uh, it's not so easy for IMSA, right? No. Um, particularly in uh, a normal year where Le Mans is in its normal slot. So uh, TBD, for sure. TBD, and David, we have the TV contracts up, as you know, with NBC, so we're in this discussing that also. We like to have network coverage here, of course. We're, we're spoiled yeah. by having network coverage every time we've been here. Uh, versus cable, and um, we would like to continue that, but you never know what the network coverage is going to be until you look at the calendar and what's yeah. your conflicts. Right? We had a conflict this year. We could not run last week and get net network. This weekend we could, although we lost part of it because they had the French Open. I guess it went long today, right, for yeah. a little yeah, while. Yeah, Djokovic took his time to do what he normally does. Yeah. <laughs> right. Cheers, David. Tommy, you have a question? Uh, you know the logistics and for the time that you had to really put on this event uh it was it was wonderful but overall we do know there was a loss of revenue because of that is there anything that you would request i know lieutenant uh governor Gar gilchrist was here uh is there anything that you would you know further request from the governor's office to uh maybe help smooth transition uh next year's or something that you would possibly need a, a help with from there now, we're, we want to remain very independent from asking for um, um, the public help with, in terms of money from our, our taxpayers. We, we, we intend, we're a 501c3, um, so we intend to uh, operate it ourselves just as that with the help of our partners, with the help of the fans, and um, no intentions for our handout from our, our governor. Our governor is very supportive. As you mentioned, Lieutenant Governor was here today. The static about seeing people brought together again. Michael spent time with him. I spent time with him. He toured Team Penske's garage. Um, he was at our gala on Thursday night with his wife. Couldn't be more proud of what we did here to open things up. So uh, 
no, we're not going to tap him on the shoulder at all. We, we've got work to do to, to make this thing, you know, break even. Um, our hope is we can make it break even. But you know what? You know Roger. He's far beyond that um, from what you see on M1 rail downtown, what you saw in Super Bowl, to what you see of the police cars that he did, you know, donated 100 police cars to the city, EMS vehicles. It's more than making a, a dollar here or making a profit. It's giving back and making Detroit a better place. But I had a question, just to notice that, you know, the support and get some comment from you guys, the support from the sports teams in this town. We really felt it, I think, over the last couple of weeks. Our Grand Marshals this weekend, well, Coach Dan Campbell with the Lions. We had Sadiq Bay here today as our Grand Marshal on Sunday. The Tigers reached out about having you on TV to, during their broadcast. You, you mentioned, you know, the, the Quicken Loans and the golf tournament, the Rocket Mortgage Classic. A lot of support from the sports organizations, the, the teams, the sponsors in this town for this event. What does that say about the Grand Prix? That's, that's a good point, Mira. Probably unprecedented, wasn't it? Yeah. How we all work together to make things work right. Cause, yeah. I mean, Chris Illich sent us their playbook. Um, we sent them our playbook. Uh, we sent our, our playbook in terms of COVID playbook to Jason Langwall at Rocket. They yep. sent us back theirs as well. We got Myers playbook. We got Dow's playbook. They got ours. So all those work together to make this thing right. Um, coach Campbell, it's great to have you out here yesterday. I hadn't yeah. met him before. Yeah. That, that is a player's coach, man. <laughs> you can tell, can't you? He is one player's coach. What a great guy he is. And, of course, today with the Pistons here, too. So good point to bring it up regarding how we all work together to make this thing happen. And we haven't done that in the past. Right. We relied on them. I think it show, shows a lot about the partnership that we have in the city. Yeah. It's about how we all watch each other's back, especially as we're all trying to figure this out, getting back to normal. They all kind of pitched in, and we hope we're certainly willing to help them as well. Any other questions from you guys? Thanks for all the media, for all your support yeah. this weekend, all your Absolutely. coverage. Really appreciate it. Hope yep. you guys enjoyed it. Uh, can't, can't wait to be back in, uh, in about 12 months. Thanks, you guys. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, bud. Thanks, Michael. <laughs>